So, you want to be a tank hunter for Oklahoma D-Day. Well, we're here to show you how you can become an anti-tank gunner by making your own anti-tank weapon. What you're going to need is a bazooka, or as we like to call it, a bazooka. It's essentially PVC pipe with a paintball marker mounted inside. The material you can use for this is either PVC, which is white, or ABS, which is black. Now, this 8-inch section of PVC weighs 6.9 ounces, and this 8-inch section of ABS weighs 3.3 ounces. So you can see the ABS is less than half the weight, and that's what I prefer to use. However, it's difficult to find in most areas because it's not up to standard building code. Also, you're going to need a 2-inch shimmel adapter. It is threaded on one side and is smealed on the other. Also, you're going to need a 2-inch end cap, which is also threaded. You'll need two of those, one for each end. Now, if you want to build your own custom hopper like we have, you're going to need a short section of 3 quarter inch PVC. The reason we build our own custom hoppers are because when you use one of these and you go up against a tank, it often gets shot and it often breaks and you only have a limited supply of paint so you don't want to lose any of the paint. Now before we get into the build, a little bit about us. I'm Mark DeSico, call sign Seeker. And this is my son Jordan, call sign Cheerio. We run with the 82nd Airborne at Oklahoma D-Day. This coming year will be my 16th year running with the 82nd Airborne and playing at Oklahoma D-Day. Now in the 82nd we have all types of people. We have the young, the old, the inexperienced, and the very experienced, I guess you could say. And we use that to our advantage because we draw from the knowledge of everyone. Last year we had some young kids in there that had never played at Oklahoma D-Day before and we took them under our wing and they had a blast. We showed them how to play safe and fun all week long. And we also have some senior representatives uh, that give their knowledge, tactics, and skill to help us have fun and advance on the battlefield. My son and I work together as a tank hunting squad and we have a blast. We have uh, many other father-son teams in our 82nd Airborne as well as uh, individuals. We even have a married couple that work together. So we take all our uh, diversity and, and make it to our advantage. We have fun all week long. Uh, either Wednesday or Thursday we'll have a unit barbecue. Everyone gets together and we build camaraderie, share ideas, and talk about stories and such. So we have a blast. We'd love to have you if you're interested in becoming an anti-tank gunner or if you'd like to run just as a regular uh, foot soldier. And now let's get on to the build. You're going to need to cut your PVC or ABS to an overall length of 54 inches. Now when you cut it, you're going to have to measure because these end caps take up a little space, about an inch and a half on each side. So you're going to have to cut it a little shorter than 54 inches. Now once you get those cut, you're going to need to adhere these. First you're going to need to apply the cleaner to the inside of your adapter and to the outside of your tube. Then you're going to need to apply your glue to the same area, the inside of your adapter and the outside of your tube, and then you're going to stick them together. Now you only have about 5 to 10 seconds before these guys are stuck and they're not coming apart. Also, when you have your end cap, it is preferably that you, ought, you paint it a different color so that way people know that there's a barrel blocking device on there and you won't get shot out and people know that you're out. I also like to have one on each end of my tube. That way I can carry a second one. Uh, this was for my first tube. You can see it has a, a rope on it. Well. My cocking device was at the back end of the marker for that year, so I just put a, a string onto it. And if I needed to cock it in the tube, I'd just unscrew this a little bit and pull the string and it would recock my marker. 
That's just one creative way of how to handle different problems. Also, since this is this was my first tube, it was made with the black ABS, and you can see that I've had to repair it a little bit. And finally, it just isn't strong as strong as the plastic PVC, and it gave away. This is after about five or six years of use, so you get your money's worth out of it. You can assemble two of these tank tubes for fifteen to twenty dollars, so they're not really that expensive. That's including paint and and the glue and all that. Now the next step is to cut a slot in the bottom of your tube so that your marker will fit into it. This is going to vary depending on different markers. I usually find an inch to inch and a quarter wide slot will suffice. Okay now the first step to cutting your slot for the marker is to lay out your lines and I find that the easiest way to mark your lines are to put your tube up against the door jam and take your marker or pen and just draw a line rotate it about an inch draw another line and there you have your layout lines connect the dots and now we'll go on to drilling which is the second step just grab any decent sized drill bit so you can have large radius corners and go at it Then, just remove the excess. Now you can touch it up with the Dremel tool or go at it again with the saw. And there you have it. Once that's in, you can fit your marker inside and see where your feed neck is going to lay and then mark it on the inside. I like to remove the marker. get a one and a half inch spade bit and drill a hole from the inside to the out. And then you can have your feed tube opening. Depending on the marker you'll also need to mark from the inside and drill for the different openings for your cocking mechanism. Next, once you get your slot cut for your marker and it fits in there easily, you're going to need to get a piece of regular water pipe insulation or a regular pool noodle and cut a slot. You want to fit that inside your tube so that your barrel can rest inside the foam and it won't be wobbling around inside. This will give you a more accurate sighting when you're shooting your weapon. So that way your marker's not bouncing around and the angle of your barrel is different from the angle of the tube. I find you can mount it together either using pipe clamps or standard zip ties. My zip ties I can slide on and off, which make it easy 
for field servicing. Next, you'll want to make your own custom paintball hopper. Rules specify that the hopper can hold no more than 10 rounds of two, uh, paint. This was my first prototype. It's made out of the 3 quarter inch PVC, cut at different angles, and glued together with the same pipe cement and cleaner. The next prototype is, I couldn't see how much paint I had, so I just drilled holes in the side, but I was worried about water and debris getting inside. So I just took a standard two liter bottle, cut a section, put it over it with some electrical tape, and now I have a barrier with a window. Once you get this all together and assembled, You'll want to get either some common household paint from the dollar store or wherever. I paid a dollar a can at the home stores. And uh, paint your, your weapon up. Olive drab is the common color. But I base coat it with black or something like that. If you want, you can sand it so that the paint readily adheres to it. Essentially, that's it. <laughs>